Honey, I'm home. There's nobody there. It's just good practice for the uh, future, hopefully. Anyways, I got a new gig. Say hello to the city's newest paper boy. I know I look great on the outside, but that's just how I look all the time. Believe me when I say that this job is tough. I don't like it. Apparently, I have to have social skills if I want to sell any of my papers. I have social skills, all right? I'm sociable. It's just I don't like people. It's not a good thing, is it? That's not even the worst part. It turns out nobody even reads the newspaper anymore. I guess you can get everything for free on your phone these days. Did I say I'm sociable? Obviously not if I didn't know that information. And you know what? I checked my phone, and it's true. Everything is digital. Movies, books, porn, but more importantly, any video game news you could possibly want to know is online. Physical media is something that is slowly but surely becoming a relic of the past. There are a few major real-world examples that I can list, like textbooks, music albums, and even newspapers. That last one in particular is probably the most significant piece of media that's going away. Rather than having to wait until the next day to get local updates, in the modern world, updates come out as soon as they happen. It's beyond convenient. Caleb! What? are you talking about? What does this have to do with video games? Well, look, even though world news is just a little bit more important than gaming news, there was a time where video game information was under the same print-based method similar to newspapers. You ever hear of magazines? They're pretty similar to newspapers, except they cover more material and take longer to produce. Just about everything with the fan base has a magazine to call its own, which of course also applies to video games. There are actually a lot of different gaming magazines, some more popular than others, but each one is a blast to look through if you're just taking a trip down memory lane. I know I said this job isn't a good, but I can't get fired. I need this. I can't let the digital age take over. It's gonna put me out of a job. <sighs> okay. Let's think about this rationally before I move on to self-doubt. I can make anything sell, alright? I can sell sand to the beach. All I gotta do is think of something witty to remind people about the importance of physicality. Cause yelling extra, extra is so overrated and I'm putting an end to it. I got these customers in the bag. When an industry becomes crowded with a bunch of people wanting to do the same thing, there comes a time where you have to make yourself stand out and do something different. And what game company does that better, or worse, than anyone else? I'll tell you who, Nintendo! In 1987, Nintendo of America would proudly debut the Nintendo Fun Club newsletter. The Nintendo Fun Club was heavily catered towards fans. It was something that was totally free to join. All you had to do was fill out an insert or a flyer that came included with certain Nintendo products. With that, every so often you would receive issues of Nintendo Fun Club news. Included in these issues came a whole bunch of exclusive content straight from Nintendo. Fans were greeted to all types of video game reviews, tips, tricks, and anything else to help make your gaming experience more enjoyable. Although the Fun Club magazines were short-lived, Creators Gail Tilden and Howard Phillips had laid down the foundation for a far more ambitious project. As the final volume of Nintendo Fun Club news made its way into mailboxes, players would unfortunately have to say goodbye to the Fun Club, but also say hello to the most exciting players magazine in video history. Introducing Nintendo Power. In July of 1988, the premiere issue of Nintendo Power guaranteed subscribers that they would be hooked for life. Volume 1 really made sure to leave an impact on players. Everything from its colorful presentation to its devotion for its fans had to leave gamers wanting more. The type of content featured in issue 1 was simple, yet super effective. Included we got a few in-depth guides for games like Super Mario Bros. 2, 
The Legend of Zelda, and even Double Dragon. Alongside walkthroughs, Nintendo Power also provided fun little sections that featured upcoming games, activities, contests, and even a section dedicated to answering a ton of fan mail. Another standout and obscure piece of Nintendo history can be found on page 55, where we get introduced to the Howard and Nestor comic strip. Howard, of course, was Nintendo of America's very own Game Master, Howard Phillips. Nestor, on the other hand, sort of acted as the mascot for Nintendo Power. He would stick around for a few years to come and would even be featured in adventures of his own where he interacted with various other characters. Fun fact, Nestor has his own official video game, while Luigi doesn't. Think about that. A couple wasted brain cells later and I'm back in business. Check this out. Everyone's gonna want a newspaper after they get a load of this. <laughs> Let's get physical! Copies. <laughs> what are you, some kind of sicko? Get your mind out of the gutter! Unless... No, stop. Stop. Look, just like everything else I do, of course I gotta go and share it with the world. There's always a catch, though. Seems like the world isn't ready for a new paper boy. Luckily... I'm the paper man. <laughs> Social skills don't fail me now. The years that followed just further cemented Nintendo Power's spot in video game history, as well as in the hearts of fans across the country. The fan service in Nintendo Power was pretty cool. Other than letting gamers reach out and have their questions answered, there were also all types of other perks to a magazine subscription. Every time a new issue came in, there was also a bonus poster attached. A lot of these posters are incredible pieces of art, and other times, these posters are... Shark Tale, but whatever. Posters weren't the only gift from Nintendo Power. Sometimes there would also be fun little extras like controller and console stickers, little Pokemon comics, cutout activities, e-reader cards, and sometimes even VHS tapes. But that's a story for a different day. Also, this is either a major or a minor thing, but sometimes a subscription to Nintendo Power meant you could get a free strategy guide or some kind of cheap t-shirt as a gift. It really wasn't much, but the effort was pretty awesome. By the year 2005, Nintendo felt it necessary to revamp the image of Nintendo Power. With the introduction of a new logo and an overall makeover, the magazine stopped its longtime focus on providing fans with guides and cheat codes and switched over to stuff like news updates and game reviews. I don't feel like this was a bad change. At this point in time, if you needed a strategy guide, you could just look it up on the internet. So getting news straight from Nintendo was like having a Nintendo Direct once a month. The biggest change, and probably what's considered to be the downfall of Nintendo Power, came in 2007 when Nintendo of America announced that they would no longer be the ones publishing the magazine. Publishing responsibilities were now being handed over to the company called Future, with their first official publication starting with Volume 222. I mean... Future was alright, I guess. The magazines were still pretty cool and are still fun to look through today, but you can just tell that there's something missing. There's not much life in these magazines. The contents of Nintendo Power just kinda looked... soulless. As Nintendo Power kept going, Future would make some really weird choices along the way. Exclusive guidebooks weren't a thing anymore. The issues got thinner, and what gets to me the most is the introduction of subscriber editions and newsstand editions. Basically, if you were an existing subscriber, you would get this pretty boring, minimalist cover art, while the variants at the supermarket had all this crazy text and looked like they had character. It's like, why would you do that? Why do loyal customers get the lame version while the cool version is on store shelves? Just let everyone get the same thing. Clearly, Future wasn't the right company to keep Nintendo Power alive, which led to the unfortunate discontinuation of the magazine altogether. In August of 2012, Nintendo decided not to renew their license with Future, and the final volume of Nintendo Power would be released in December 2012. The final issue serves as a farewell to the beloved magazine, and even provides a poster showcasing all of the amazing cover art throughout the years. Another fun fact, 
the only major Nintendo console to never be mentioned in Nintendo Power is the Nintendo Switch, which is a true testament to just how popular the magazine was. I guess Future isn't entirely to blame here. These days, the need for magazines, no matter what the topic is, is honestly unnecessary. The internet supplies us with news as soon as it happens, so the need to wait a month for a paper-based medium is redundant. I guess the end of Nintendo Power was inevitable anyways. While Volume 285 is a timeline of Nintendo Power's best moments, the final page is a tearjerker if you're a sentimental chump like me. Not only do we get a proper farewell, but for the final time we get to see the return of Nestor, who at this point is all grown up and has a son of his own. The two reminisce on the days of old until finally leaving to go play New Super Mario Bros. U, thus leaving us with an image of Nestor looking back and shutting the door to his collection room, closing off 24 whole years of different generations who learned to play with power. My boss gave me the ultimate test of my social skills. He sent me to this place called a sorority house. <laughs> wow. It was nothing but chicks. Come on, I dare you to ask me how many phone numbers I got. None, okay? There, you happy? Nobody would even look at me. I'm quitting this job. You know what? Social skills ain't that important anyways, and neither is physical media. I'm glad everything is going digital. And you know what? Relationships and girls better go digital soon too, or else it's gonna be one small step for man, one giant leap off the tallest bridge that I can find. <laughs>